Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. And Paul, Paul knew that you can't make it more complicated than that. Are you going to wreck the, the goodness of the, of the message? I mean, that's all there is to The gospel is so simple. But have you ever been to places where they, they really twist it up and make a lot, add a lot of extra stuff to complicate it and you got to do these extra steps and all this and then you might maybe make it if it's a good day and you, you go away thinking, man, I don't know. I'm probably not going to make it to heaven. When instead, Paul says, you need to know the truth. And so he said in verse 17, he said, Christ, he said, did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not in cleverness of speech, he says, okay? He says that the cross of Christ would be made void. God, Christ didn't send me to make this complicated. Not to be clever about it, just to be straightforward. He said, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but is the power of God unto what? Unto salvation to them that believe. This is the power of God to save us. Now, last week, someone asked me, where did I go to for the story about the, the serpent that's on the, that Moses made that he put on the, on the top of his staff? And uh, the bronze serpent, remember? That was Numbers 21. For the, I, I'm sorry, I don't see where the person was, but they came up to me and asked me this morning, where's the story? What you, to you, you told the story about where we get the thing for the side of the ambulance. You know, the, uh, people, they see that symbol. But when I was younger, I wanted to be the backwoods ranger in the um, Grand Canyon National Park. So one of the requirements is you have to be a licensed EMT. So I started studying really young to, to pass my EMT license. And, and um, one of the things that the, the man who was, he was the head of the fire department that, that taught me about, uh, trained me for being, you know, to take the test and everything. And he, Chuck was his name. He, he said that, that when people see the side of the ambulance, just that, you know, the ambulance is coming that it's a, it's a psychological thing, he says, that, that helps them. Like, if someone is really stressing, one of the things that they're taught to tell them is, if they're like, say you're, say, he goes, if you're ever away from the ambulance, but you're the first one on the scene, what you do is you say, the ambulance is coming. The ambulance is coming. And, and he goes, and it's the strangest thing. You can have your finger on their pulse, because he's had this happen. He's there at a side on the roadside with a wreck. He's called it in, and he's holding the person's pulse, and they're just racing, and they're just, you know, <laughs> panicking. And, and he goes, the ambulance is coming. He says, and as soon as they start to hear it getting closer, and they see the ambulance, they just physically see it, you know, like in sight now. There it is. It's, I can see it. He says, as soon as they can see it, their pulse starts to relax. It's a strange, he goes, the strangest thing. Now he goes, do you think, now he was a Christian man. He was discipling me in Christ. He was like, do you think that has anything to do with the story in Numbers 21? Remember when they got bit by the serpents if they were complaining and grumbling about Moses? And the Lord said, you want an antidote for the anti-venom, you know, to fix that uh, snake bite? Well, what did they have to do to get the anti-venom? They had to look at what? The bronze serpent that Moses was told to make and put on top of his staff. The very symbol we put on the side of the ambulance came from that story in the Bible. And so here's Moses with the actual stick, with the bronze serpent. And I, I can just, I want to, when we get to heaven, I get first dibs, okay? I'm going to ask the Lord, could you rewind the tape? I want to watch, like, because I, I have some Jewish friends and some of them are really stubborn. I mean, that... Uh, well, they don't want to say they are, but they are, okay? And I mean, I can just picture this. All these Israelites, because it says some of them, the Lord said, you want to live? All you have to do is look at the serpent that Moses has. Now, they were already mad because Moses was in charge. That's why they were grumbling and complaining. Why does he get to be in charge? And it's not fair. And who's he? And you know what? Moses didn't even want the job. You guys read in the Bible, right? He said, I'm not a good speaker. I, 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 I stutter. And Lord, why don't you send someone else? And, and the Lord goes, no, you'll do. And just to accommodate poor Moses, the Lord says, all right, I'll speak to you. 
you'll speak to your to to your kid there, Aaron, and he'll speak to the people. You know, you just you think you're gonna get out of it when you tell God, I don't want to do what you're calling me to do. God goes, No, you're doing what I call you to do. I'll just I'll accommodate your weakness, you know. I'll give you an Aaron to to pull this off. So so he goes, All right, you I speak to you, you tell Aaron, Aaron tells the people. But he still didn't get out of the job. Even though I think there was times he's like, Lord, these people are really annoying. You know, and they're really and they're complaining. They're complaining against us and against you. And the Lord said, don't take it personally. I'll deal with it. And the Lord did. He sent those snakes, start biting the grumblers. Sometimes I wish he'd use that in churches today. Man, could we like thin down the ranks and get rid of the complainers? You know, I mean, can you imagine? But see, what the story tells us is something that is so simplistic. That all, he, all, all they had to do to get the anti-venom, which I personally love this story. I don't know about you guys, but no needles. I hate needles. You know, no needles to get injected with. All you had to do was look at the bronze serpent on top of Moses' staff, and you were instantly healed. Anti-venom received. You know, like the Lord went, I got it. And it showed that it was, it was an act of faith. Because if you didn't believe, I ain't going to look at that. That's stupid. That won't work. How, how many of you guys believe God could actually do this, by the way? Like, actually make people well when they just looked at the little bronze serpent that Moses... Yeah, because he did. He did use this to test their hearts. But the Bible tells us in Numbers 21, that some of them, they were, they were stubborn. And they just wouldn't... I ain't gonna... I can just picture... I, when we get to heaven, I'm gonna say, Lord, could you put it on the big screen? I want to, you know, see the faces of those real stubborn... I ain't gonna look. And the guy's like... And, the, you know, he's already bit. The poison's starting to go through his system. He's only got a couple minutes till, the, till it just seizes up everything. And he's sitting there. Go and I want to have, you know, how in the movies when, when you hear what's going on in the person's mind, you know, like the dialogue of their thinking. I want to hear what those guys is thinking. I ain't looking at Moses. It's no fair. He's got this bronze serpent. and That's just stupid. And that's probably foolish. It wouldn't work anyway. And the guys, I, you know, I could just hear the little self-talk going through his brain until finally he doesn't look and then plink he dies and you know I would like to to be able to go hey you know you you, you say what well, it can't work why don't you look and see because all you got to do is look and we went to John chapter 3 verse 14 we saw as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so must the son of man be lifted up and Jesus went on to say that whoever would believe in him, they, they would have life everlasting. That, and that's the verses right before John 3, 16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, what? Believes. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. All you have to do is look to Christ. His pre See, Paul said here, I didn't come to preach in cleverness that the cross of Christ would be made void. You know, clever preaching just voids the cross. Just gets the attention off of the real deal. When, when, when you're bit by sin in this world, you need the, the true cure to that sin. And the only cure is the cross. To look to, all you have to do is look. It's like that. All I had to do was look at that provision God made with Moses. That's why Jesus used that story and said, just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He's like, just, it's the same thing. And the Jews should have got it. You'd think they would have gone, oh yeah, that's easy. All we got to do is look. Just look to the provision. God said, this is my provision. Look right here. And if we would just tell people, you know, they're already bit by sin. We all are. I mean, come on, is there any of us? I never have to ever do this. This is the funny part about being a preacher of the Lord is that I never have to really persuade people that we have sin. It's like they all come already knowing that. It's like, what do we do about it? And I get the privilege of saying, all you got to do is look to Christ. He's the cure. You look to him and instantly it's like anti-sin venom dispensed, you know? I mean, he's the one that forgives, right? He's the one who cleanses us of all unrighteousness. So Paul says, I didn't preach to you cleverness with the gospel. I just told you the story, simple, plain. Because I don't want the cross of Christ to be made void. 
I don't want the gospel to be watered down from what it is. It's truly power. The power of God to salvation. Now, to the person who's perishing, they're going, this is foolish. That won't work. Just, just like some of those Jews, I bet, did. They went, how could it work that I would be you know, cured of this poisonous snake bite by just looking over at that bronze serpent on Moses' stick? That just seems foolish. It can't really do anything. But did it do something? Yes. But see, you had to look. And the people who tell me, I don't think looking to Jesus will work, I said, have you done it? For those of you who have looked to Christ, raise your hand. Now I already know I'm preaching to the choir again. Let's bring all your unsaved friends next week, okay? So we can let them know about this. Because you guys already know this. I mean, we, we, get to, we get to look to the cross and get salvation. It's the power of God to save us. And, but to the people who, who haven't looked, they go, ah, oh, it's foolish. It won't really work. I say, how do you know? Like, I would like to say to some of those Jews, if I had a time machine, I could go back and be around the guys that are the stubborn ones. Like, just kind of go, all you stubborn ones who don't want to look at Moses' stick, come over here. I got to tell you something. You know, and I would like to tell them, bef you know, right, right before they get bit. When you get bit, because you're going to get bit, you complainers. When you do, and you're sitting there having your little two minutes left of self-talk to decide how dumb this idea is, how about do me a favor and just look? You know, give it a shot before you say it won't work. You know, when people tell me, I don't know if the gospel will work, I said, have you tried? Did you look to the Lord yet? No. Why not? Well, it's foolish. It won't work. I'm here to stand here and tell you it does work. It does. And you know what is the coolest thing? When you do, when you decide inside that you will look to Jesus and you look to him and you realize he did that for you. You're included. And that sinks into your heart. It is like, the man, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a weight is lifted off of you. When you go to him and say, you paid for my sin? Okay, take it. You know, take it away. And the Lord goes, done. The Bible tells us in Isaiah, though our sin be as scarlet, he makes it white as what? The snow. I mean, in the, it, it, it says in the Psalms, that he takes our sin and he removes it as far as the east is from the west. Not in a circle, guys. In a straight line. Infinity. That's how far he takes my sin and removes it from me. Pew. You talk about a strong throwing arm. He's like, give me that sin. is wads it up. See ya. And sends it forever away from me. Now, it says to never be remembered again. Now, since I'm a good teacher, you know, like, that's my strong... Point. I got visual aid. See behind me here? There's another psalm that says, He casts it into the sea. There we go. I got a sea for you. Of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered again. When you look to Jesus, Jesus goes, Let me take away that. All that guilt, all that shame, all that hurt. He removes it and He chucks it into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered again. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website amazinggracekona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's amazinggracekona.com. Mahalo and God bless.